Yeah. 
start new tasks, vision, and do some different things. But overall, for these annual meetings, my hope and goal would just be that the whole family comes together to talk about what we're doing. That it would be Thanksgiving with a business meeting, right? That we would just talk about what's going on. We have games for the kids. There'd be other things going on, and this wouldn't just be a business meeting. That it would be something that's fun. And so today we are going to cast a lot of vision. The different teams are going to talk about different things. Uh, sorry, mom, mom and Eva, fuck Keith. I know what you guys said. This is our first time here, so this is going to be fun. But you guys can find out a lot about what we're doing, like really quick. So, uh, so anyway, so I'm just going to turn. Yeah, yeah, just make sure I do it right. All right, so I'm going to turn this over to Andrew, and then he's going to kind of be the MC and run it as our chair. And so uh, I'll turn it over to you, man. Yeah, so um, very interesting time. So I was actually going to, uh, I sent an email out to our previous league team this week. Um, and I'm just going to share a little bit of that. Um, just, it was kind of my thoughts at the time as I was rocking my son to sleep and just thinking about this. Um, so a year ago, um, Faith Community, this is kind of where I was at Faith Community. Um, NOS was about to go on sabbatical. Um, go get it recharged, refreshed, come back, energetic. Uh, Heidi was the chair, doing a very excellent job. I had three kids. I was happy with three kids. <laughs> I, was, I was in that group. I was good. Um, and Justin was a guy that came here and preached once, and he had a church over there, and, and he helped us find runners. So that's who he was to me. Um, and social distancing was something that none of us had ever heard of. And yet, now here we are. Uh, I'm the chair, scary. Um, I had four kids. Uh, Nas is retired. Justin and Pulse have joined us. We've merged for a new church. Um, and everything is new. Um, I'm a person who likes word. I like knowing what I'm coming into. And I like, um, yeah, I think most of us are probably that person. And everything is new right now. And as uh, Sean Colin, he sent something out uh, earlier this week, I think it was on Facebook. He said, uh, a comfort zone is a great place, but nothing grows there. So we are all growing in ways that we never thought we would be a year ago. So that's just, that's just really cool. So I'm going to share the scripture from 2 Corinthians 5.17. I think we've all heard it. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. And that's where we are right now. We're a new creation. So when we think about um, the meetings and um, the ministries, um, everything is new. Everything's on the table. So I know, for me, I, I've been in church all my life. So I've seen a lot of programs come and go and they, they they work for a time and they kind of didn't and they went away and what happens to a lot of us is it was really cool when it was going and then we get so burned out uh so kind of maybe bitter about what happened at the end but all that stuff's still on the table i mean there's there's ideas there's things that you've experienced and you know we're a whole collection of people with different experiences and um, don't be afraid to say, hey, we did this thing one time, and it was really cool, and maybe it didn't work long term, but not everything has to last good years. <laughs> you know, sometimes six months is all, is, is a great time. Sometimes one time is, is an awesome time and can, can radically change lives. So don't be afraid of that stuff. Um, so with that, um, let's pray and get into the meeting. Dear God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this collection of people. Um, we just pray that your, your spirit comes on us and um, that we can have ideas and visions and um, just a really fruitful discussion over the next, um, I guess, however long as, as we establish this new church, as we, as we try to um, make, make our neighborhood a better place, our community a better place in your name. Um, in your name, I pray. So, um, starting off with old business, um, we have minutes from, I guess all that I can say, I'm not sure which meetings we have minutes from. Okay, so we accept the old minutes from February 9th of 2020. Can I get a motion for that? Oh, yeah, so Nancy's not going to know a lot of people's names. So. <laughs> <laughs>
The Verizon cell tower um, still has not started yet. They told us that once they send in, once they sign it, they send us a bonus check, which we got. Um, and then once they break ground, we start getting two thousand dollars a month. Um, and we were hoping that that was going to happen this month, but it has not. And we don't really know when they're going to get started. So. Um, Justin or Catherine's going to try to get in contact with us to get the info of the contact info and just find out what's going on there. But really, right now, we don't know. And then, basement renovations, that's Justin. Looks really good down there. He's still doing that stuff. He's moving too fast. So, basement and Yeah, I'll just kind of cover uh, both sides of this. So, um, on the, the renovation of the basement, we ran into a snag right at the beginning. So when uh, uh, when Elijah had all these guys there, it was like, all right, let's get in and knock this out, let's do the demo. And then it was like, actually, let's change the plan. <laughs> so everything had to kind of be changed a little bit. Uh, everything down there is done. And guys, this is the, the thing, before we were to say anything else, there needs to be a huge shout out to Mike Alvarez. And I just, he is uh, so comfortable. Uh, you know, Elijah did the demo, uh, you know, Matt and I and a few other folks, uh, Ben was there. And we, we did some of the stuff and, and we were able to get some of that stuff going with the, the stage and everything. But Elijah and his team did all, a lot of the work. The last thing they had to do is just put some like coverings around the sound booth and then we'll have to hang some curtains in there. But after that, it's completely done. Literally everything else, all of the electrical, all of every mounting, the TVs, everything, Mike did all of that. Put in all of the different things. I mean, this so anyways, um, and I'm sure, you know, those of you that were able to tune in uh, for Elizabeth's funeral, you guys know how important that really is to our community and how dear she was to us. And Mike tested every piece of equipment that we had that whole day to make sure that it was going to go off without a hitch. And for some reason, as soon as we started the ceremony, everything died. Like the, the piano just went out, the sound wasn't working in there, there was all, and it was, we had done this mic check, we had done it, it just stopped. And he had Mike running, he does this for free, running around trying to get everything. I just wanted to, in this meeting, acknowledge Mike and everything that he's been doing. So, uh, the downstairs will be done. We'll get into a couple of different things, so we have no finish, but it will be done very soon. Um, so, anyway, so that is the downstairs basement. I want to talk about rentals just a little bit. Um, you guys know I'm CEO of Space Together, and just the, the stuff that we're seeing. So, on average, before COVID, before the virus, 30,000 churches closed every year in America. Um, we're working an enterprise deal with one of the largest denominations in the states. And as we were speaking to them, I asked, how, how has this affected you? And this was just, this was a couple months ago, so things have gotten a little bit more hectic since then. And we're sitting and we're talking, and I was asking, you know, what, what is the, the fallout of this going to be? And he said, you know, I'll, usually we, we close right around five to 600 churches a year. That's just typically what happens. Our optimistic estimation for this year is at least double. And that was our optimistic, you know, idea. So I say all that to say that um, everything is down as far as rentals go, right? And quite frankly, for us, we don't necessarily want to fill that up right now. With everything being the way that it is, with social distancing and all the other things, we don't want to get people in here immediately, right? But I will say there are going to be a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people that are losing their buildings, potentially losing their ministries, and we could be a great resource for all those folks. Uh, I was talking with uh, yesterday at, um, at Elizabeth's uh, celebration, I was talking with a guy very well known, all up in the commercial real estate stuff. And he was saying the best that he had heard so far out of any commercial real estate broker is that they're down 50%. That's the best that they've heard. So look at more like 80 kind of across the board. So uh, things are definitely pretty pretty crazy in commercial real estate right now. Um, and so with rentals, I can't tell you this is exactly what's going to happen. I'll just tell you that having the basement done, having the building that we even the fact that we are still alive, that the church is still alive, that all of those things just exactly that happen. And you know, and, and, and really, truthfully, if we think about that, you know, I mean, that, that could have been the fate of both of our organizations before the joining, and those things really could happen. So, um, anyways, the fact that we're alive, the fact that we have the basement done, and we're still rolling, is just going to be a great resource for our community. And so, very thankful for that. Is there any other old business? Apparently, Justin holds it much closer, so, you know, I'm a general. 
Is there any other old business? No? Alright, so moving on to new business. First thing is, uh, so Justin and Catherine are our pastors now. So, so the lead team has decided to pay them accordingly. Um, now obviously that changes the budget a little bit, and Heidi, who's very uh, process oriented, we talked about it, and we also got um, a payment protection loan. So it's basically two and a half months of our old salary, and that came out to $28,800. So that's a basically a grant from the government. Um, just um, and we decided that starting in May, Justin and Catherine were going to get uh, $3,312 more per month. So that's basically what like NASA salary plus the um, secretary salary is how that kind of worked out. But that works out to twenty six thousand four ninety six for the whole year. So um, our bottom line of the budget actually um, there's like two thousand dollars extra. But as Cheryl knows, that's, we don't really have two thousand dollars extra. But um, because like Justin said, we lost some renters. Um, and just, um, she's going to talk about giving um, in her report probably, and that's not where we projected the what. We don't really need to vote on any budget because the, the bottom line hasn't changed from the salary. So um, that's what we need to kind of discuss. Um, and then next up is church lobby redecorating. That's after. Keep this short. Um, this building is beautiful. I don't mean to like put on spot, but the architect of the building is sitting in this room with us. Many of you know John. Um, and it's a gorgeous place. And I emailed him the other day. I've been talking to a few people. Just hey, it's a new season. We actually have most of our building kind of shut off. Cozy is actually here as well, and she, please rise. Yes, we want to thank you. Like, 
being with people physically in person, to enjoy the presence of God, to be together, to encourage one another in person, is important, it's a big deal. So we're just going to be planning things, and honestly, thank you guys for your patience. Um, it's been crazy to plan and then replan and pivot, and um, thank you just for bearing with us through all the changes. Next Sunday, we're going to do something fun. A lot of people still, you know, are not ready to come even separated, even with people with masks on. They're not ready to come in a room inside. And so we're going to have hymns and worship outside. Hallelujah. If you are apprehensive, you can sit as far back as your heart needs and be away and just wave at people. But it's just a chance for more families or their kids to come. For some people that are more at risk, if they, they want to get out, they can come. Um, and we'll be down in the lower parking lot singing hymns and having communion, partaking of like that sacrament together. So... Um, we're going to do something else like that this summer. Just It's beautiful here, and it's just safer out in the open air. So we're going to try to use that to our advantage before it gets cold again in the fall. Um, and so, yeah, just be with us for those things. And thanks. Uh, next up, uh, so talking about Nas and honoring him in the 45th anniversary of uh, Faith Covenant. Uh, that, those plans were for this month, and obviously that will happen. Um, Justin and Kevin are in communication with us a little bit and just talk about um, we don't want to kind of do like a, a halfway celebration for him. Uh, he put nine years into this church. Um, he was half of this congregation. <laughs> and, uh, so, so we want to honor him properly. Um, in doing that, where half people feel afraid to um, or aren't comfortable with, you know, where we don't want to get everybody sick. So um, that's just kind of up in the air right now. But we will be doing something. Um, I know Chuck's working on a slideshow and stuff for him. And so if you have pictures or memories or something for Chuck, um, I know he's been in contact with me, and I assume he's contacted other people. Um, all right, so next up, we have something to actually talk about. So the for our new church, the new membership list, we went through four weeks of membership class. Um, we have two congregations that, that were full of members, and we have a two and a half page list. Should I read all these? Or I, would, just, I would say no. Yeah, okay. Man, so much to do. <laughs> you said to no. <laughs> What'd you say to no? out to everybody. Uh, if you didn't get that email, please contact us if you went through the, the four weeks and you want to be a member um, because it's, it's a lot of people and, and some people will probably fall into the cracks. Um, and for that, we apologize. It's not what it is. So based on the list that was sent out, can I get a motion to approve the members? I got somebody just fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and second? And all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Alright. So now we are all members and we can all vote on the name change. The, so we voted on uh, name change a while back. Um, our church, I know, um, I said our church. Um, so I know that Pulse was a little looser run. Um, Faith Covenant is very structured. Um, although we don't always follow the structure, we have it, but it doesn't seem like it's always used. But anyway, um, the name is the part of the bylaws. So to change the name, we have to change the bylaws. And um, I don't know, Catherine, you want to talk about this a little more. So we, we voted on the name of Agape. Um, it ended up being a little different because that was available from the Secretary of State, so. And so basically, we had a whole rebranding team. Our church name is, hey, we're a local church. Our name is Agape, a church community. Where they thought maybe, you know, have signs, you gotta update all those things. Um, and so that's what everyone will know us by and will see on any kind of social media or website, all those things. But then because we are a 501c3, there is that business side legally. And so, um, unfortunately, Agape, just as it is, it's already taken. So I'll have to read it down and like flow fill in with other agape somewhere else in Colorado. But because of that, we just um, we're trying to figure out the most kind of simple, closest name to that. It's just for legal purposes, like our bank account, the 501c3, and our bylaws. And 
So we just thought, let's just make it a God based COS, like a God based water at the spring. Um, if, you, if anybody has any issue with that or a better idea, um, feel free. But I'll uh, just see our legal name over to your deal with that or after this change. Um, but we just want to legally update everything to reflect our new name. So we are a God based church community. So all of you. And then legally on paper and all the business stuff that no one, most people would see, will just be about base COS. And so that's what we were voting on. That, that change. So basically, in bylaws, it, instead of saying this church will be known as Faith Covenant, um, it says this church will be known as about base COS. So is there any discussion? Yes. Okay, cool. um, can I get a motion to accept that? Yeah, actually, her, her report 
this first, so yeah. <laughs> Can we maybe give like a round? I know Heidi's joining us, Karen I think is on as well, just to thank them for their time. Yeah. Yeah, like Heidi was on the uh, transition team. Um, she, she got really busy with uh, her job this year. It was supposed to be like just kind of part time and turn into a lot more. Um, so she became vice chair, and the uh, vice chair has to be on certain committees, so she got stuck with that. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, they just, they've all done a lot of work, um, and we really appreciate their ideas and what over the past uh, time they've been on. So, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Alright, so on to ministry reports. So first up, we have Cheryl. Oh, uh, by the way, if you're not comfortable using the mic that everybody's used, uh, feel free not to. So I, I just realized that not all of us fit in here. So.
advance. They are praying for our children here. When they're speaking, they know six to six months in advance that they're speaking. So they can pray about this. They can think through this. They have time to bring something fresh. And so that's exactly what we hope to have here. That group will kind of grow a little bit and change. But, but the, the whole hope of that is that we're not just up here speaking to you on a Sunday morning. That when we're having barbecues, right, we're still having something going on with our ministry team. Right? We still have things happening in ministry taking place, whether it's from the platform or not. But just putting like an eyeball on these folks, you know, who's going to be teaching, and kind of start getting their styles down. You know, I mean, I know that some people love it. I think uh, it's always funny. Mike always says that Matt is his favorite person to speak to folks, right? He's like, I heard everything Justin has to say. I love when Matt speaks, right? And that's what we want to have. I hope that there's folks in here that are like, Matt, I love it when Sean speaks. But you have to come no matter what. You can't just like, I love when Justin speaks. I'm not coming. So like, I won't release the schedule to you guys. That's what I'm talking about. But anyway, that's the purpose of it. It's just that we have a group of people that know that their role here is intentional to administer to the body and for us that looks like washing feet. You can't do that unless you're prepared, right? Amen. So that's ministry to you. So next up we have uh, Agape Kids with Pam. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a privilege to be um, here loving kids. Like our church values kids. And um, Justin and Catherine really have that value. And when this transition happened, you know, I'm like, I don't know, what should I do? And the Lord said, do it because they value, you guys all value children because that's the next generation. And uh, the other night when Elizabeth's uh, memorial of Carol was doing this song about our children's children. And so we're seeing plans right now and plans um, that go deep, right? And those those seeds are gonna really make an impact on the world. So I, I don't mean to preach, but it's like I'm really excited about what God's doing. Um, you know, there's no junior Holy Spirit. Amen? There's no junior Holy Spirit. I don't see that in the Bible. Like only some get some, kids don't get any. So we believe, as a team, that our kids can pray for one another, can speak prophetically, can hear from God, and that's pretty amazing. And so it's just an honor for us, many of us, to be back there with the kids. Um, I just wrote down a couple things I'm gonna keep on track now, so sorry. Um, we wanna empower our children and our youth to walk in the goodness of God, that's our hearts the goodness of God, and just like Justin Catherine have been seated into our church, thankfulness, and every, just about every week we talk about thankfulness. And believe it or not, the kids are like, I'm thankful for chips and sports, but you know what? There's a lot of kids in the world that don't have that. And so we talk about that, and we're like, it, the littlest things we're thankful for. Um, we, we empower kids to walk in kingdom knowledge. We, we empower kids to walk in the power of Christ and in the love of Christ. And so that's that's our vision and our mission. Um, we are making a spiritual investment when we work with our kids. So I, I'm really excited. Some of you might have in your heart to work with kids. We need you. We have right now 49 kids on our 49 children from birth. So and it's just growing. There's probably more to put on the list, but those are the ones that are on there currently. So I'm just saying is, you know, let's do it together. If God is putting that on your heart, it's not scary, you guys, because we work as a team. If you commit, it's like one Sunday a month. Okay? We look at your gifts and what you're comfortable doing, and we will bring a team around you to help. And it might be serving snacks and helping somebody tie their shoe. It could be leading a lesson. It could be doing a craft. There's just a, a ton of different things. So I just welcome everyone, okay? Um, we are kind of transitioning to a, a new structure, and uh, Catherine and I have been talking about this, and uh, my, my leaders have been talking about this. Um, so for some of you that are on this list, we are like, what's happening, okay? So um, it's not in stone yet. We're still working out some of the details. 
But we've, uh, we have coordinators now, okay? I've implemented coordinators, people that are in charge of like a grade level or a, a special area. Because that way, we, the more leaders we have, right, the more people are stepping up into their calling. That's what I believe. So I, I just want to shout out. So when I say your name, you can just kind of stand up and give away. Linda Nelson. Linda is going to be in charge of our pre-service chapter. So when we have like Sunday school and special events and we need to have some somebody caring for the kids at, uh, um, ahead of service time, Linda's coordinating that schedule and, and that communication. Uh, Alicia Gammons, Alicia's not here, but Alicia, you're online, I know that. Uh, you're coordinating nine-month-olds uh, nine to three-year-olds, so we love that. And I'm coordinating the three-year-olds to kindergarten. And we have Tina Martinez and Rachel Leonhardt. They're going to be coordinating our biggest group, which is first through fifth graders. And right now that's like 20 kids or something crazy like that. Um, I mean, not crazy. Don't be in the back. It's an awesome way. Um, you know, there's been some times where I've been like teaching, going to teach, and then like all these kids come to church. And part of me is like, oh my gosh, like, and I'm a teacher, like, too, right? I'm a teacher, but I'm like, oh my gosh, is this going to work out? And then I thought, wow, all these kids get to hear about Jesus. Like, even if it's not the perfect lesson, they all get to hear about Jesus and the power of what God does. So, very cool. And then we have Rachel Thomas, who's in charge of our youth. And, um, Rachel is going to present right after me about what's happening in the youth, okay? And I would like to recognize our teachers and helpers. There's a list here, and it's going to grow because we're growing as a group. Uh, Andrea Sharkey, Andrew, say yes. She's not lying. Uh, Andrew Crump, <laughs> Randy Piper, Brett <laughs> Farrell, Brett is on the And then we have uh, Brittany Carl, and we have Desiree Rogers with our uh, best friend, and we have Elijah McDonald in Pueblo. Thank you, Elijah. <laughs> And we have Jen Crump. We have Jen Crump. And we have Catherine Knapp. Catherine does it all and fills in whatever I need her. Uh, we have Mindy Rodriguez. Mindy. We have Morgan McDonald, also in Pueblo. We have Rosa Alvarez. Rosa, I know you're probably a heartbeat, but we love you. And we have Thaddeus Gavis. And so that's our team. Thaddeus, thanks for watching. Um, incredible. So we need that many people if we're going to do it once a month. Some of us do more than once a month, but if you commit, you know, we love to get you in there so that you're used to the kids and the kids are used to you. Plug in with me, okay, um, if, if you're interested. Uh, just real quick, COVID, stay at home time, right? All this came together, we're like, what do we do with kids? So we've been doing some Zooms with kids. We've had our, our challenges. <laughs> they haven't always been great, um, but we're learning together and the kids are great. In March, we delivered uh, Bible lessons and activities to every home with markers and crayons. We also did a Welcome to Summer in, in May where the kids got to uh, get really fun stuff that annoyed their parents, like squirt guns and stuff like that. Um, and then I just want to talk about our next um, July 12th, so in two weeks. We are hoping to step forward to have more families here at church. Okay, so that's kind of scary. I'm a public school person, and I'm, you know, there's, no one has a plan yet in the school district, so we're trying, Catherine and I are in close communication of the regulations that are going on in the state, so we want everybody to be safe, and we want to give everybody freedom, and we want our kids to love each other. So many of our kids are really like, I want to see the kids from my church. And so this is in response to that. And so we're going to, starting with the 12th, we're going to be, um, providing a space outside for our little ones, nine months through fifth graders, to fellowship. We'll do a short lesson, we'll do thankfulness, we'll do a snack, and a little bit of playtime. And we'll do that after the worship time, okay? Um, knowing that, like, the longer kids have free time, the more apt there is to have um, issues. Right, teacher Rachel? <laughs> uh, she's a middle school teacher, she knows. <laughs> um, but I want to make this point clear. Um, it's changing, it's not going to be perfect, it's okay if you decide to keep your family home, we love you, we understand. There's 
no easy solution right now. I've been in contact with churches here in Colorado, church in uh, Arizona, who's kind of been the forerunners, and now the state is back in lockdown. So we're just trying to be as safe as we can. But I'm, I'm going to read it word for word. We will not be heavily enforcing social distancing with our children. How can you? Right? <laughs> So we will not be heavily enforcing social distancing. Instead, we will focus on ensuring that all children and teachers check in and complete a short health screening, temperature, the questions, etc. Okay? That's what we're going to do. Um, you could change it to two weeks, but we kind of have a plan. We're going to be moving forward. Uh, please, if you have concerns that I'm not thinking about, I just the site, you can talk with me about that. Uh, we're trying to do the best we can to get families back at church so that we can praise God together. Amen. Thanks. Thanks. Rachel. I just, I just want to say real quick, um, if you've heard that list and you think, oh, they've got plenty of help. I live with three of those 49 kids. <laughs> and they need all the help <laughs> So, um, I'm Rachel Thomas, I'm the youth coordinator here at Agape. <laughs> so, like I said, um, and so, yeah, that's just my role, it's just to like coordinate with the youth and make sure they're involved. Um, I just want to say first that I feel like I have the best team going there. Yep. Like, my team is just awesome. We're on, we're, we're trying to create a community amongst the youth so that they go to each other, they can open their hearts up, they can pray for each other, they can be for each, there for each other in times of need. And this is not, we had a plan, you know, you plan, I'm a planner, I am a goal setter, we had this whole goal, this whole plan, and then COVID happened. And I was like, Jesus, this is not it. I thought you gave me this vision. And one of my, I would say, proudest moments was also the saddest moments was when Elizabeth passed, and the boys found out, and the first thing they did was hit up the group text. And then all of the youth just text and outpour, we're here for you, and people started praying through text. It was so sad, because that's not how you want it to happen, but it hit me that this thing is being accomplished, because they immediately, I'm there for you, praying for you now, start sending prayers, start sending stories, examples, and then all of a sudden we became a lot tighter, people started texting each other, and that's what our goal was, it was just good to see that their hearts and it just saw it happen. So I was like, oh God, you knew this was gonna happen. And the reason I bring that up is because I know it was because of my team. Because I said I have the best team. So on my team I have Sarah Hamill. She is our events person. So she plans all of our events, all the things like that. I have Mike Hamill on my team. Um, I tell him all the time, I'm extremely jealous of his Bible knowledge and how he goes about it, so he really helps us out with curriculum and getting where we need to get to. Um, I have Robert Schmidt, who, if I met him, knows his heart for evangelism and his heart for getting better out there, so he is, whenever we have an event, but especially in the public, he's the one that is evangelizing and teaching our kids that. I also have Chrissy Lynn Felt, who is not here, um, but she is over our youth mentorship, helping our older youth start the transition to becoming adults. Um, so I said, it's literally thinking, I was like, you know, we all have these skills and different things like that, but combined with like the Power Rangers. <laughs> so that's how I think of my team. Um, let's see. The, the main part for youth is empowering our youth to be leaders. That looks in different ways, that comes across in different ways, but it's building up every single youth so that those things that our weaknesses, our strengths. I don't know if you guys know Battle for Evil, the book she wrote, I can't think of the name of the book, but it's, it was just a, a ring on time. That was a foundational book for me as a youth because I was very, very outspoken <laughs> as a youth. And I used to get so, yeah, I used to get so much trouble in school. And I have a sister who looks exactly like me, who fell. She's a year older, so then we were together. So she was awesome because she was quiet. And I was bad, so that was like my school life. <laughs> so my mom gives me Medical Angels book, and I read it, and it's all about your weaknesses or God-given talents and gifts.
this or this or this or not weaknesses are truly powerful. So that's the thing for me for you. Is these weaknesses that the kids might see as bad, like no, this is power. This is the strength that God has given you. Um, so we said. So we've had a lot of events, so you haven't really seen too much of the youth team here and probably too many youths, because we've been meeting every Saturday night. And so with that, we do a Zoom call on Saturday night at 6.30. And one of my happiest things is pretty much everybody that shows up, I'm always surprised. I'm always like, wow, oh, we're all here. <laughs> You're taking the time to do this. So, um, but with that being said, now we're going to be transitioning and coming back here in person. So our first day back with youth will be July 12th. And because of the shorter service, youth will no longer be participating in grade worship. It's not that we're not, we're not going to be doing it here with you guys. So we're transforming it where we're starting to be back there together. And we're going to be doing worship. It's going to look different because um, we don't have a band, but it's going to be song. It's going to be a time of singing the Holy Spirit, um, ministering to each other, praying over each other, having the words for each other. We're going to start getting a little bit more in depth into that. We always have done it, but now it's just going to be a little bit more intentional and it's going to be a time set aside. Um, the other thing we're doing is about once a month we are having events, and that's a newer change because of how. COVID with the Zoom, because we're doing Zoom, we up our events to months and months so that three weeks we're on phone or um, laptops, and then one week we're in person and we're doing something. So some of the past events we had, where we had a May the Fourth Be With You, we had an ice cream party extravaganza, and then we had, we just recently had an old school game night. So we're gonna continue along that same kind of lane, and the thing that I want to say about the events is that these events, we've been having more fun events because of the isolation. But for me, and many of me, in the past, we've done stuff like um, my concern have ministry where they give bags to the homeless. So we've done that. So it's going to be fun things, but it's also going to be the spiritual aspect of stuff. And one of my firm beliefs about youth and involvement and Getting people to wrong, it's a big commitment for you. I will say that because we're very, very protective of our youth and um, the things that people say into their lives. But what we also want from people is stories and backgrounds. We all have a different story, we all have a different background. You are an expert amongst yourself and your story and what you know and the things you've experienced. You are an expert. So we had done a little bit in the past and COVID happened, like we had Andrew and Gerald. We have them come in and teach our kids about treasure hunts. They were going to go on longer than COVID. So we'll be reaching out to people, but always feel free to come in and talk to us. And we can schedule you for a time to come and speak to the youth about your story. We, it's the experiences, that, for me, it's the experiences because I want the youth to not be, um, I don't want to say trapped, but I don't want them to have one perspective of what this is about life. This is my life, this is what I know, this is my comfort zone. Like I said, we're raising them to be leaders. And for me, that's leaders in any area of life they're in, whether it's at work, whether it's at school. And so you are an expert. So please, if you have, you know, praise see God. If you're like, oh yeah, I kind of want to come and talk to you and tell them the story, you are welcome to share your experiences because through that, it gives some confidence and richness. Like my background is very, very different from New York City, so it's very different, but um, I've always been saved and I've always had God first. So for me, it's telling them about that and how, who I became and how I became and all the different steps that took along that and how we got to church and how I, you know, I want to say learn and learn God. And so for me, it's very, very important that you're involved in it. And yes, it's not like, oh, I can't commit to, you know, being on the group chat the youth are texting us at 2 a.m. in the morning. Like, I get it. Like, I can't get into that. Like, I'm just, I literally be like, I'm sleeping, stop. So, I could get it. It could be, oh, well, I, you know, I've been on a mission trip. Or, this is what happened to me when I was 20. I thought this was going to be, and my life changed, and different expectations, and different things like that. And just to tell you how awesome God is, and how He brings us together, um, God has been putting on my heart to tell my story, and I never did it. And then Matthew and Elizabeth lost, Matthew and Caleb lost their mother. I lost my father at 16 for long-term illness. The first conversation we had was about that, and they never knew, because I never really said it. And then automatically we connected more 
because of that. And it was like, so we've had texts and conversations where they text me, how do you, and I'm like, oh, because it's a direct experience. You don't know until you say something, and it's just more than appreciated. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, next up, Women's Community with Desiree Rogers. Talk to me. Uh, my email address is tnaytalk at 
love at gmail.com. And I don't want to miss anybody, so if I have I really deeply apologize. But moving forward, um, our worship team, you know, there's a lot. You guys just come in, you see us doing worship, and there's a lot that goes behind it, a lot of prayer, a lot of, of planning, a lot of practice. <laughs> and so we come early. Um, anyway, there's a couple of things here that I just want to talk about. Uh, some of our pillars in worship are to build a safe place for people to use their gifts and grow in those gifts, to passionately steward our craft of music with a spirit of excellence and creativity, recognizing that corporate worship is powerful. Um, and it's our desire that in corporate worship that we connect with God and each other. And so ultimately, just giving God to his name. Um, if you would like to be a part of the worship team moving forward, please email me and we will set up a time for you to come and we can either do it on Zoom or we can set up a time for you to come and ask to do an audition for you. Um, a little bit about me and Sam, we've been, we were worship practitioners at Pulse for two years. Prior to that, we led at another church for a couple of years. So we have some background in that, but we do have so many leaders uh, for worship and moving forward on working on creating some teams. So people like Alec and Cozy and Sarah and Daniel, and you haven't seen that, but those are coming as well. Amazing, amazing worship leaders. We have such an abundance of worship. I'm stoked about what worship is going to look like in this coming season, and hopefully we can just continue to worship together as well while growing each other. So. Next up, uh, the community garden. Yeah. This is my garden mask. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Kim Bradburger, and probably knew most of you. Um, in 2010, exactly 10 years ago, at a meeting just like this, the church voted to donate land and some funds to help us start a community garden. We have, if you go outside and look around, there are condos circling the church, and we thought that people who wanted the garden but had no place to do so would benefit by a community garden. And um, so uh, I think we had, uh, did I bring the pictures? Yeah, so you can see, this is where we started. This is the building of the garden had some, some of our garden workers. Um, and as you can see, you cannot beat the view. Um, if the garden doesn't do enough for you, you can stand and just enjoy the mountain as well. Um, but, um, so the church came together one Saturday morning, I believe, and um, thanks to Matt and Eric West and Matt Burns, they, got, they had the, the beds all pretty much cut out. And so the church members just came in and put them together. 44 beds, um, raised beds, um, were put together in a morning. I mean, it was amazing how fast. And we had the benefit of Don's garden, who brought all the garden soil up, and he brought his front loader. And so they would put four beds together, and then he would front load them. So nobody had to haul dirt with wheelbarrows. It was fabulous. It was just really fun to watch them together. Um, as I said, we have 44 beds. The rent on these beds is quite low compared to other gardens in, in Colorado Springs. And there are a number of community gardens just popping up. Um, also churches, we kind of were the beta group for um, high speed urban gardens as to what churches could do to help people garden. And so it's just been, um, it's just been amazing. Um, needs that we have at the garden, um, I don't have a big garden team. It's me and Matt helps tremendously. Um, he's got a team of guys that have been helping because, as I said, we're um, 10 years into these beds being built and they're starting to kind of come apart. And so this summer, um, Matt and his team got together and have rebuilt for almost a third of the beds. Um, but we still uh, need more work. So here are some of the needs that our garden has in case you're interested. Um, every fall or early in the spring, I call gardeners, check with gardeners to see who wants to rent beds again, and if 
they don't, then we find more gardeners. This is actually our first year every single bed has been rented for the first time in a while, so very exciting. Um, there's maintenance around the outside of the garden. That needs help weeding, weed eating. You'll see me out there with this giant weed eater, and when the battery runs out, so do I. So that's all I have to do one time. Um, also, if you look on the other side, the side down for the um, car wash, there's rocks that, that are holding it in because it's, anyway, there's support rocks, and they get a lot of weeds in there. And what we're hoping to do is fill in with cement. So what we're going to need, and I may put this out toward the end of the year, is people to come and help weed and then help us with some of this cement insertion. So if you're interested, um, we'll, we can use all the help we can get. Um, I'm trying to think there was one more thing I was going to say, and I, uh, oh, I was going to, when they were talking about the kids and how much fun the kids are, that was one of the interesting things that one of our early gardeners said was that their son never ate broccoli until he grew his own. So that's another reason for it. So thanks for letting me talk about it. And if you ever want to come down and take a tour, I'll be happy. Um, you can show some of the, uh, if you have the pictures, of, yeah, you can see here we have beans that are coming up. We have one gardener who does, every year he does um, collard greens. And I mean, these things get so huge. It's just amazing to watch. So it's fun to go down and just look at what's growing. And um, mid-July is about the best time. Gardens aren't really pretty things, except about mid-July to August when the crop is coming in. And that's my, that's my squash plant, too, if I may call it grow. Anyway, so come and talk to me if you're interested in hearing more. Thank you. Uh, so next up, we got Mike who runs the bikes with um, facilities and grounds. So Mike has been, I don't know, if you ever drive past the church, you usually see his van out there. Um, I know like, I was told in this room, you did like all these chairs, right? Like, so he's steam cleaned all these chairs, and he I mean, just does an amazing job. All right, thank you. Uh, so yes, yeah, 168 chairs. <laughs> So also downstairs, I have a lot of equipment 
and stuff like that that's downstairs that I'm trying to sell. Uh, if you know anyone that wants any equipment locally, that would be great. Uh, instead of shipping it all, I would ship it to like Florida, California, and New Jersey, and stuff. So, um, all that money I do put back into lights. If you've been downstairs, I redid all the cans. Eventually, I would like to do the uh, fluorescent lights. Um, again, that's just extra money I get. I just put it right back in the church. Um, and it's going to get a bit better. I have a bunch of um, And then, I'm going to You're amazing. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, next, we're, we have a lot of outreach. Um, obviously, um, a lot of these people that have talked are kind of outreach slash inreach. Um, but Catherine is going to kind of, are you running us? Is that what you're going to do? I mean, okay. Um, so first we have Kathy with one plus one.
students to prepare and serve a meal to the, excuse me, to the homeless at the Salvation Army uh, the second Saturday of every month. Uh, we, we feed between 150 to 200 people, and, uh, and we try to uh, we try to supply just a simple meal, a main course, small salad, cottage cheese, a dessert, a drink, fruit. Uh, it costs about a dollar a meal to prepare and serve, which is pretty good economics, if you think about it, for a per meal. And we kind of do more than just serve a meal, but also add a simple lesson to God's blessing to these people. That's fortunate for our community. Uh, previously, uh, we organized a, a group email, and that's how we would communicate. But uh, given, uh, joining with the GOP, or joining with Pulse and the GOP, we're going to do a new thing where we're going to communicate to everybody through the weekly uh, email that goes out, that Catholic puts out. So that's where you will hear from us and uh, find your opportunity to see what we're doing in that, uh, in that group. So please be on the lookout for that. Also, um, we started off with a bang four years ago. And, uh, you know, as we were saying earlier, things come and go. And I get that. But right now, we're looking for some, some rejuvenation to this program. And uh, so, uh, if you think about it, we put out just 12 million meals a year. And if it takes four to five people to do that, that's 60 people a year, not a month, a year. So that's not a lot. And uh, I think that uh, if you look at it, um, the outreach doesn't take much you know, to help our community. Just one time a year. You know, I mean, our, our community here is easily covers that. So we're looking forward to the, to the person help. But what does that mean? You know, in COVID, I understand that. I think part of that's been a problem. I mean, we've had a hard time finding people to serve. And I totally understand that. But we can prep the meal. We can shop for the meal. We can do those things independently. And we can come together and serve the meal. So I'm hoping that you all will hear our, our uh, input in the weekly or the monthly when we do uh, communicate to the weekly email and then see what you can do. Uh, there's several things. I want to try to keep this short, and so that's why I'm kind of jumping through it. But, uh, so what does an uplifting hand look like moving forward? Well, first of all, in prayer. Prayer for these four people. Yeah, switch up. When you meet these people down there, it, it's kind of your time. So uh, prayer for the safety of them, the safety of the servers. We can all interact during this time of COVID. Can you see where these people live in uh, homeless shelters? There's no social distancing there. Uh, you can volunteer. Like I said, there's not a lot, not, not a lot that we need to do to volunteer much to be part of this. Uh, you can coordinate shopping, coordinate prepping, and we have people that will serve. So that's not an issue. You don't, you know, if you're uncomfortable, I get that. Going through that. And, uh, you know, during this time, but we can find people that will serve. And finally, you might consider adding a small donation to the church budget. We're not a line item on the church budget. Uh, we're not big spenders, you know, we're a dollar a meal. Uh, so, but we live off of donations. So that's what we do. Uh, I look forward to, you know, if anybody has any input or wants to join in, we're looking for volunteers for uh, coordinating the effort, prepping the meal. Uh, we put out calendars, what we're going to do, and uh, you can see where there's holes in the calendar and you can jump in. It's a simple, easy thing to do that touches our community. And, for, so put, and I will say, uh, one, one thing to add to this, uh, the last three months that we've been down there, oh, the, the, uh, the people at the shelter have commented how how many groups have, and, and, and again, we don't blame them, but how many groups have left supporting the shelter because of, their, because of COVID. You know, and the residents are happy, and they thank us here for coming. So your, your, your input and your, your labor is well received. 
at all times. So, uh, look forward to communicating to you all and uh, joining for the Thanks. I just want to say real quick, so I've uh, helped with surveys a couple times, and you know, when you drive down the street, you see someone panhandling inside the road, and that's like, a lot of times in your head, that's like a homeless person. Um, but when you go to the shelter, it's, it's you and I. It's, life happens, guys. And uh, you see families, and you just realize, but for the grace of God, how close that can be you. Um, so it's just, <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but you just realize like how how great of a ministry this is, and how little effort it actually takes to help. I mean, it's the Salvation Army does this all the time, so it's it's a very smooth operation. Um, the people that you know, the people that are in charge, they've done it. it. It's it's not a lot of like mental like hard work. It's just the time to be willing to do it. So I really.
helping them just have their own. And teach them and your kids about that as you help out or whatever. Just let me know. Um, and that's going to be awesome. We, we, uh, we do different things with them. And then there's another organization in town that's called Because I Love You. Some of you are familiar with COS, Color Springs. Um, basically, well, there's about 400 churches in this town. There's a lot of churches, a lot of ministries. And uh, what Because I Love You, one of the things they're doing is trying to get people to work together. Businesses, churches, nonprofits. I was like, man, what can we do together? You can follow them on Facebook, Instagram, just because I love you. Keep up. They do just a world of different things. Uh, that's how we were able to serve those meals during all this. Just organizing. They, they work with all kinds of nonprofits in town. Um, Christian Knot is just about helping out the city um, and getting collective efforts. And their tagline is, because uh, I love you, exists to unite and ignite the church to love Colorado Springs, unifying communities of faith, government, business, and education to meet tangible needs in our cities. Um, we partner with them as a church monthly, financially, um, and then there's also just different ways. Like this year, they're doing a backpack bash. We got a lot of kids trying to get back to school. Um, they're doing five different locations this year, so no matter where you live in the city, there's someone close to you. The goal is to get out 10,000 backpacks and school supplies. And so if you want to donate to that effort, just let me know. And if you want to volunteer August 1st and 8th, so the first two Saturdays of August, you can volunteer. I think the cool is most volunteer together. Um, some of us did that last year. Um, you can do that and you'll just be helping get uh, packs to, to kids. There's also a citywide worship night. Hallelujah. If you like worship, it's amazing. It's ecumenical is the word, meaning there's all different kinds of, you know, Catholic background, denominational, non-denominational. When do you see all those people together? It's rare, honestly. And it's just a time to come together and worship, which is any believers in the city that want to come together. And that's October 2nd. It's a Friday night. All this is online on our website, too. Go to the event calendar on our website. And there's a city art survey. Literally all over the city, you've got this, like 300 projects. There's stuff happening. If you're 5 years old, 2 years old, up to 95, whatever, um, there's projects that you can participate in. And we'll have more information on that. We're putting together a part of that team that helps organize that. That's a lot of work to organize that many projects to serve that. Um, but that's October 3rd. So please mark your calendar. I really want us at the church to be involved in that. It's a citywide survey all over. You can pick any project of interest. And it's Saturday, October 3rd. And that next Sunday, my hope is to have this big celebration. They always have a video. Somebody stays up till 4 in the morning. You guys making a video. It's hard to do that that quick. Of just footage from that day. And we'll get to watch it and just celebrate what God is doing. through not just this church, but the kingdom family in the city. No matter what church people go to. And so I'm excited about that. Um, you can just keep posted. And we actually have the honor, there's a, there's a board, about 14 people, and I'm part of that board um, for Because I Love You. And we're actually going to host their meeting in July here. And so there, there's an amazing team of people, different leaders, and different um, things involved in the city, part of that board. And if you want to help me, just um, I'll be in that meeting, so I'm on the board. But if you want to help me set up, um, my mom is Southern, and she said that she'll cook some good food for some people. So they'll get uh, so good food. But if you want to help me set up some tables and stuff without me, I just want to let you know that it's cool to use really for different stuff, and we're going to host that meeting. Um, we also partner financially with Mercy's Gate. They help families. They've been here, I think, since 1982, helping families in crisis. And I just want you to know, um, Kurt Lundstrom has really been awesome helping if people donate um, canned goods and that kind of thing. He's great. Thank Kurt, wherever you are out there. Um, he's great at um, just, like, taking them over and donating that. So you can always do that regularly. And then we also partner just, we're part of the EC. Um, we partner with them. A lot of you guys already know this, but I just want to tell you. Um, so anything that the ECC, the Evangelical Covenant Church, has going on missionally, raising up leaders, it's extremely diverse network of churches, and um, it's just cool to be a part of that. And then a lot of you that were formerly known as Pulse, um, Bishop Dan Englehart is a mentor, apostolic leader, very close to Justin and I, and very supports and believes in what God is doing here, and is going to do with God. He's actually coming to speak August 9th. He can preach, y'all. You will love him. So I'm excited about that. He'll be with us, and we partner with him as well. He travels all over. And one thing that I like, you know, you can go preach a bunch of messages and travel, but he not only does that, he relationally pours in and raises up sons and daughters and people. He's so relational, and sometimes that's where to find these days. So we love him, and we, we partner with him as a church, too. So we're just about it. I'm excited about what we got going on and what else God is going to do. And um, our heart is that, we would just overflow in that, you know, whatever way God is leading us, whether that's for a month, and then we're like, we got to get that gone. That was a bad idea. That's okay. We're flowing with the Holy Spirit, and we want to do just whatever is helpful and whatever God's in. Amen.
and whatever is not in you, just let that go. So we always want to hear from you too, what you put in your heart. Um, we do this together. And I'm so thankful for leadership here, thankful for my husband, um, but it's, yep. it's, it's a family effort, right? Like, yes, we're a church organization, but we're at the end of the day, like, forget all that stuff. We're just a family, people that love Jesus and want to get to know each other, want to reach out. Amen? And I'm excited for this new season. I'm excited about what's going on. I know we ran long today, but there's a lot going on, so that's a good thing, so you can celebrate that. Um, I'll let Andrew or join us. I like saying that word. It's really smart. You're <laughs> smart. <laughs> opportunities to use your gifts or find your gifts. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us don't know what we have until we use it. Um, please, please, please get with somebody, talk to Catherine, um, find a place where you can start to make the world a better place. Because that's what we're here. Is to impact our community. It's not to get a bunch of members and have a bunch of people and have a big budget. Like that's that's not the point. That's not what we're going for. That, that that's just not the point. Um, and I know a lot of times churches, that's where we that's where we tend to go, that's where we tend to think is financially. And obviously without money, like nothing works. But we need to make the world a better place. We need to impact our community, our our city, our county, our state, our country, like the whole thing. Um, and it just starts with saying, hmm, that sounds interesting. And then going and saying, hey, you know, I can help last Saturday night. I can go help serve him. I can help do this. Um, don't get things set out. Like, that's what we need. That's what, that's what Christ is calling us to do. So it, it's a whole new season. Everything's new. Um, we're trying out new things. We're, we're all new ministries, um, new teams. So don't be afraid to jump in because nothing's established and you're not an outsider. So um, this is a perfect opportunity to start. So on that note, can I get a motion to adjourn? Please. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's like, yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.